Hi everyone, welcome back to Bonnie Astrology. Today we are talking about the heart-centered and electric new moon happening in the sign of Leo, August 16th, and what it means for your zodiac sign. As always, if you enjoy this video, you can give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it'd be very much appreciated. I'm posting regular astrology content, and if you want to book a private reading with me or use any of my astrological uh, services, the information is listed in the description. That is the only place you can get me, as always. I sound like a broken record, but there are scammers that pretend to be my account and will reach out to you directly asking you if you want a reading and stuff like that. And it is never me, just for clarity's sake, I'm just not going to do that. Um, they usually say something vague, because they did it to me. <laughs> they pretended to be me and tried to scam me through my account, which is, I don't know if these, I don't know what the deal is with these guys, but they did try and ask me if I wanted a reading and stuff like that. And I was just like, no. And um, they, they were saying, oh, I feel such a pull to your name. And I was thinking, of course you do, because you stole it. Anyway, they're in the, the, um, the comment section and on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should do, because I post very regular astrology content there, but they will follow you and they will ask you if you want a reading and stuff like that. Again, it's not me. As I said, I don't know how sophisticated these guys are because they did try and scam me as me. So you've been warned anyway. So if you do want to book a reading with me, the information in the description is the only place you can get me. But let's hop into this new moon in Leo. So this is a new moon and new moons are opportunities for new beginnings. They usher in new chapters in our lives. And what's interesting about this one is that it is going to be conjunct a Venus retrograde in Leo. And as we know about Venus retrograde, I do have a video up on this if you want to check it out. But Venus retrograde is a time of reflection, reassessment, and it's a link to the past. It has its origins in rethinking what's happened before, where we've been in terms of relationships, in terms of romance, in terms of money, values even. And when Venus goes retrograde as it did in July, we do this reassessment period where we're rethinking and we're restructuring and we're really digging deep and seeing what certain things uh, matter to us and what certain things mean to us through the context of relationships, money, values, that sort of thing. And it's in the very heart-centered sign of Leo. So with this new moon being an opportunity for a new beginning, being an opportunity for a new chapter, it is conjunct Venus retrograde, meaning that this new chapter in some way is an opportunity to begin again. So this might be that you are trying again at something that didn't work before. And this new moon is actually incredibly electric and incredibly eccentric because it has a square to Uranus. And any square to Uranus means that we are challenging ourselves through the lens of, is this authentic to me? Is this true to who I am? And to do something differently, to do something from a different perspective, to see it from a different perspective, to approach it from a different uh, point of view, to try something that maybe you've never done before. So as this is maybe redoing something, beginning again, this might be that you're doing it differently or your viewpoint is differently and therefore you'll get different results because the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But if you change the way you approach it, the way you view it, or the way you do it, it is going to get different results. So with this being conjunct Venus retrograde, uh, this does offer an opportunity to begin something again, to try something again, whether that is that you just want to try to uh, date again, or you want to try applying for jobs again, or you want to try this artistic project that you've been working on that you've not really been getting much success on again, from a different perspective, from a different angle, to maybe try to date different types of people, to maybe apply for different jobs, different types of jobs that ring true to who you are based on the reflection that you've done. Sometimes when we step back from a problem and we really get in deeply about it, and yes, it is raining, it is August, this is Ireland, this is summer. Anyway, when you take a step back to really rethink it, to reconsider it, to reassess it, you tend to find that you get a little bit more clarity because the outside noise is lessened. And when it is a little bit quieter, you have a chance to actually hear what's going on with your heart. And this Venus retrograde may have perhaps put you in a time out from something. You might have taken a step back from something completely and it gave you more time to listen to the inner workings of your heart. And so this new moon is the opportunity for you to say, well, actually, based on the reassessment that I've been doing and the thinking that I've been doing and the reconsideration and looking at things differently, you might start to feel like, oh, I actually want something different now. I want to do I want to do this differently. I want to approach this from a different mindset. My my values have changed or I've realized what values I actually have. 
And that's going to be important in this new beginning. But it is, it does have this sense of beginning again. And it also has this sense of doing something differently. But let's get into the details of this new moon. So depending on where you are in the world, this is going to be different. I'll try and put the world dates and times into the description for your ease of reference. But where I'm happening, so if you're in the UK or Ireland, this is happening at 9.37 uh, a.m. And it's happening on the 16th of August, which is a Wednesday. So this is around the time that you may be thinking of starting something new. Now, the effects of the new moon, though, are going to last about three days before and three days after. So you might notice that if there are external events pertaining to this new moon that might be impacting your new beginnings, they're probably going to be happening three days before, three days after. But a lot of this can be the decision to create, as Leo is the sign of creation, to create your own new beginning. So where 23 degrees of Leo falls in your chart, and if you watch your ascendant sign, I will cover that. Where 23 degrees of Leo falls in your chart, this new moon is going to show you where a new beginning is taking place. You know, maybe there's events happening around you that are facilitating this new beginning or generating this new beginning, or where there is potential for a new beginning. So this might be something happening in your mind. You might be thinking, I actually wanna start this. I wanna start that. I think I'm gonna try this again. I think I'm gonna try that again, or I'm gonna try doing something new based on the knowledge that I have gathered from this Venus retrograde, this waiting period, this uh, reflective period in order to create this new beginning. I'm gonna try something new based on the knowledge that I have. So this is typically where the new moon is falling in your chart. Uh, is going to show you what kind of new beginning that this is. As I say, this will be in the horoscope portion, but just for clarity, if you wanna pull up your own chart and look at it, you can figure this out as we go. Now, what kind of new beginning is this with the sign of Leo? So Leo, if you think about it as an energy, it's very bold, it's very outgoing, and it's totally heart-centered. So over the summer, we've really been tuning into our heart, whether this is because we've been pushed to or whether we feel called to, there has been a big emphasis on love over the summer. And now that doesn't necessarily just mean romantic love. That can be love of the things that you do, the things that you create, uh, what brings you joy and happiness and pleasure in your life. This has all been a huge theme which we have centered around this summer. So with Leo being a bold, outgoing, heart-centered fire sign, this new beginning itself is going to require you to be bold, to lead with confidence and also to lead with love and be true to your heart in whatever new beginning you are choosing to pursue or whatever is actually happening to you around this time, it's asking you to tune into your heart and tune into the sense of self-worth and confidence in order to know what to do next or what to change. All new beginnings around the time of this new moon do have some connection to the heart, whether it is a thing, whether it's a person, or whether it is potential that you love. So this is a very heart-centered new beginning. Um, in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my notes because I know that someone said that they thought I was distracted by something, but I do have notes. I have the chart up and I have the notes. So Leo is also a fixed sign. And fixed signs, it means that with this new moon, whatever you are beginning, whatever is new for you, whatever you're choosing to pursue or initiate or create, it's going to require at least some commitment and at least some loyalty to the uh, the very thing that is beginning. It's gonna require loyalty, it's gonna require commitment, and it's going to require the same loyalty and commitment to your own heart to be true to yourself. The new moon is making a very strong square to Uranus. Now this is where it gets interesting because Uranus as an energy, Uranian energy, it's very shocking, it's very sudden, uh, it's very unpredictable, which is why I think Uranus is so closely linked to astrology because Astrologers can't really necessarily predict Uranus sometimes, and that's why it rules them. But uh, the square making a uh, the square of Uranus to the new moon, it brings a sense of something beginning suddenly and unexpectedly. So there could be a new beginning coming into you with this new moon that you did not see coming something that you were not aware of, something that you did not predict, something that you did not anticipate. Now you may feel a bit of a nervous energy leading up to this very new moon and this might be highlighting what this could be for you. For some people this can be a very sudden heart awakening so do pay attention to your heart. Now disclaimer, if you feel very unusual 
symptoms in your chest, get it checked out as soon as possible. Leo rules the heart, both the emotional heart and the physical heart. So if you do feel like something is off, if you do feel symptoms of some sort of heart issue coming on, do get that checked out as soon as possible. For other people, this actually looks like a heart uh, chakra awakening. And this can be, you can really feel a presence in your chart, your chart, <laughs> your chest. You can really feel a presence in your center. That could be, you know, a dull aching. That can be sometimes chest pain. But as I say again, you know, it, there is a fine line between the spiritual side and the connection of the body and actually the physical side as well. And I do believe very strongly they're both linked, but that does not mean that if you're having a physical symptom, you should just ignore it and accept that it is something spiritual because you know, emotions trapped in the body do lead to physical and health related problems. So if you are encountering a health problem, do get it checked out. But this can be a sudden heart chakra awakening and that could make you feel more emotional. And what a heart chakra awakening does do is that it opens up your heart and sometimes that releases, again, metaphorically, sometimes that releases trapped emotions. So around this new moon, you may be feeling very moody. You might be feeling quite anxious. You might be feeling quite uncertain. Uh, other people's moods may similarly be quite unpredictable. And it's asking you to remain open-minded and to open up to change whether you like it or not but obviously if you're going to go with the opportunity for change and try and look at things differently and try and surround yourself with people who think differently to you live differently to you you're going to find that this energy is a lot easier on you if you do have sort of a uranian energy where you want to try something new you want to change something you're open to making something um happen for yourself through a different approach basically. So the more open you are to change and doing something different and being a bit unpredictable yourself, you might find that this new moon's a lot easier on you. But this can usher in some kind of new beginning that is very sudden, quite unexpected, and it's going to ask you to do something differently. Now, similarly, that could mean that you want to begin something new that nobody around you understands why you're doing this, what you're doing. People themselves could be quite unpredictable around this time. You may be one of those people. And you might be deciding that you want to start your own business. You might be deciding that you want to start dating someone who is so different to what you're expected of dating or you're deciding that you actually don't want a traditional wedding. You want to get married in the garden, um, something like that. And everyone around you is saying, but why, but why, but why? And it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to explain yourself necessarily because Uranian energy is about being authentic to who you are and what you want. The new moon being in a strong square to Uranus can also bring a need to break free of something. You might realize that something is holding you back. Something no longer feels true to who you are. The square from Uranus to the sun has us looking at ourselves a little bit differently and thinking, is this right for me? Is this truly right for me? And the square to the moon is saying, do I feel right about this? You know, what your, how your actions are aligning with your own personal truth. You know, with, with the Leo energy, we're asking, is this true to our hearts more than anything else? So you might have a sudden change of heart. People around you might have a sudden change of heart. You might see more splits. I'm not going to lie. The Venus Uranus square is probably generating a lot of splits with different people because their hearts and their values no longer align. And this can maybe make people feel a little bit anxious or a little bit on edge. But the truth of the matter is that if it was working, it would work. So in a lot of cases, the, the things that do fall apart, the things that do end around this time, they are no longer serving a purpose and they're not connected to the, the heart and soul of the person that is maybe exiting it or the thing that you're exiting, for example, the thing that you're changing. And that's okay because you don't want people to be sticking in jobs relationships environments that are not good for them so there might be a sudden realization around this time of I actually want to move I want to leave I want to change this I want to do this differently and so people may be breaking free of things that you maybe thought they were comfortable in and it turns out they were not comfortable at all again that is not just from the, the lens of a relationships perspective with Venus being in the mix it can be other things their values their finances you know what uh what they do in their day-to-day -day life from a heart-based perspective. It does bring a change of heart with this new moon. And that's okay. So the new moon is conjunct Venus and Venus had its Kazemi on the 13th. 
And when the Venus Kazemi comes around, we're at the halfway point of the Venus retrograde. We're coming out of the period of reflection, reassessment and reconsideration. And now we're getting the clarity in what it is that we want to do differently based on this new knowledge, based on this waiting period, based on this time out, based on this reflection. And the Venus Kazemi usually brings with it clarity, understanding, truth on what it is that we want in terms of our love life in terms of our relationships in terms of our values and in terms of our finances and our relationship to these things so whether or not that is that you've realized I can't get what I want with this level of confidence I can't get what I want if I don't love what I'm doing I can't get what I want if I stay with this person if I stay in this job if I if I uh, keep feeling this way about myself particularly through the context of self-love I have to say with this Venus retrograde because Venus turns the energy inward when it's retrograde and in the sign of the heart, Leo is such a sign of confidence and being seen and showing up. It can really set off some light bulbs where people are dimming their shine. They're holding themselves back. They're not taking up space in their environment. And it can offer a change in perspective with this new moon in particular because of the square to Uranus on maybe why that is and breaking yourself out of that cycle, breaking yourself free from those thoughts. In the context of love and relationships, there may be a there may be a person in your life, it doesn't have to be romantic, it could be, but there may be a person in your life, a key relationship in your life of any kind, where you're thinking, I'm gonna have to approach this differently in order to start over. Because you don't have to split with somebody to start over in the relationship. After a period of conflict, you guys can decide to do something differently. You can decide that you're going to see things from their perspective. You're going to try a different approach. You're gonna try something new. And for some people that may be reconciliation with someone from the past, of course, but if there is reconciliation of any kind in any relationships, the key here is to do something differently. The square to Uranus is saying you have to break free of old cycles, old patterns, old behaviors, and maybe an old way of thinking about a relationship. This is very heart opening energy where people may decide, do you know what? I'm ready to date again. I'm ready to love again. I'm ready to fall in love again. Or I'm ready to love myself again. I'm ready to feel more connected to my job again. I'm ready to love my art again. I'm ready to love my passions again. And this can usher in with it more abundance with this new moon. So the new beginnings happening at this time are pretty centered in love. And then, you know, your vibration matches what you attract. So if you're in this vibrational space of love, you're going to open yourself up to that in all its forms. The Mars... Mars is also trining Uranus at this new moon, which I really love because this is very inspirational action. And perhaps based on the new beginning that you are entering under this new moon, you may be feeling like I'm ready to take an inspired action towards something I really want. To get excited about something, to get excited about someone, to get excited about something, whatever it is. Feeling passionate, feeling productive too because Mars and Uranus are both happening in earth signs and to also feel practical about this change that you want to make happen you know Mars and Virgo Uranus and Taurus taking practical steps but they're still inspired with the trying to Uranus sh breaking free shaking things up but doing them in a way that you're taking practical uh, logical methodical steps to make them happen so if you are taking action around this new moon to something this is going to be an energy where you may feel very inspired but don't forget to lead with some sense of practicality so that's what I have for the new moon in Leo I'm gonna pull a tarot card or two. Oh, straight off the bat <laughs> this is such a perfect pair we have the hanged man and the ace of cups the hanged man is in reverse okay so that's very clear I feel as though with this new moon, a lot of people are going to be coming unstuck, seeing things from a fresh perspective. The hanged man is about being stuck in one sense, but it's also about seeing things from a different perspective. Interestingly, it came out in reverse, which means that the hanged man is the right way up. Now, I don't read in reversals typically, but there's something about the hanged man that when he's in reverse feels very important to me. The hangman in the upright suggests to me that the reflection and the seeing things from a different angle, because that's what the hangman is about when he's upside down, he is definitely seeing things from a different angle. And now he's come back up again to say, I've, I think I get this. I've seen the different sides. I've seen the different perspectives and I have some new ideas. That's why the light is illuminated around his head. He has new ideas and 
he's ready to take action again. He's no longer hanging around. And then the Ace of Cups is the new beginning in matters of the heart, the new beginning in love card. It's the new beginning in relationships, in emotions, emotional new beginnings. And I, I, th I think for a lot of people, this really does represent getting unstuck. And also perhaps for some people, their emotions become unstuck with this heart chakra opening. So if you suddenly feel you're not, a, you're not usually a tearful person, if you're suddenly a tearful person, if you're suddenly feeling very moved by something that you see, if you're suddenly feeling very loved or very overwhelmed or the feeling of love and your emotions are more apparent to you, let yourself feel them because you might be releasing some stuff that's trapped in your heart in order for you to let more in. This looks like emotions may come on quite suddenly and be quite unpredictable with this new moon in one sense, but it's also possibly a shift. You know, you're more emotional because things are changing. Perhaps you're becoming more emotional because you're going to become a parent and you're going to need to be more heart-centered for that. Perhaps you're becoming more emotional because you're finally doing something you've always wanted to do and you love it and that's making you more emotional. Being more emotional can be a very clear sign from your body that you're going into a new chapter because you're going to be seeing things differently and doing things differently as a result based on that change of perception. So that's the new moon in Leo for you guys. I'm going to be getting into what this means for each of the individual zodiac signs. The timestamps are listed below and I would just like to take a moment to thank you and appreciate you for all your love and support on this channel, my Instagram, and also in my astrological services. It has been a wonderful journey so far. I know that makes it sound like I'm leaving, but I'm actually not. I'm just showing a moment of appreciation from the heart for this new moon in Leo energy for all of you who watch my videos, comment on my videos, and also the friendships that I have made through this channel. I hope you have a beautiful new moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Leo, welcome to the new moon in your sign. Leo, as I've done your reading, the sun has finally come up. So Leo, happy birthday to all the Leos celebrating in August, especially around this new moon. It'll be an interesting solar return for you, that is for sure. But Leo, this new moon is happening, especially for Leo rising, so this is happening in your first house of identity and self. So for a lot of you, this is marking a new chapter whereby you're wanting to begin something entirely new for yourself. And this might be something quite different to what you've done before. I don't know if a lot of you guys are planning on taking a new chapter whereby maybe you want to change your aesthetic or your image quite dramatically. You know, we talked about this in the new moon, uh, in the Venus retrograde video for you, Leo. But if you're thinking of making a huge change to your aesthetic, this new moon is conjunct Venus. So in one sense, that's incredibly benefic and beautiful. And it can be quite nice for trying out a new style. But I would still suggest with Venus being retrograde, even though we're past the Kazemi point, to maybe experiment a little bit with things that are temporary, things that you can change later. Maybe make a Pinterest board of the way that you want your style to look going forward. Maybe try something like a temporary hair color or temporary tattoos or fake piercings or something. If you are feeling a little bit experimental and you do want to make a change, you could find something at this new moon that really does work for you, but it would be not the best time to make a permanent kind of change, you know, one that's very hard to reverse. And obviously if you cut your hair, that can grow back, but I have seen some horror stories during this Venus retrograde with hair, uh, but you can grow it back, of course, but if you're going to try something very heavy, like a bleach that you've never done before and you're going to a whole new hairdresser, just hold back, just hold back. Do Take this time to do your research, set some intentions, and then maybe let, you know, let the energies, uh, permeate a little bit and see if you still feel the same way when Venus goes direct. Uh, you can definitely make some changes, but as I say, just try to make sure they're not um, permanent because if they go wrong, they're harder to undo, I guess. Uh, but do consider the way that you want to look visually. And I know that that sounds shallow, but you know, it's, it's your avatar with it. You can do with what you want. But with Venus there, it might boost your self-love. This is a beautiful time to start something new, perhaps that you wanted to do before, or you used to do that makes you feel really confident, makes you feel really heart-centered, makes you feel really loved. Leo, something that maybe makes you feel really beautiful and really leaning into what that is. Some of you might want to suddenly start uh, focusing on taking on a more 
confident persona to be seen more publicly with that square to Uranus but if you are doing that again you know consider is it uh, authentic to you do you truly feel like yourself when you do it and if not how can you be more yourself when you're presenting publicly or in your career there could be some sort of change comes up in your career that could be a bit unpredictable or a bit dramatic when it comes to your workplace so maybe there's a new chapter beginning for you career-wise as well at this time or this new chapter that you're beginning for yourself maybe is you're asking yourself do you feel kind of restricted by where you work do you feel kind of like something needs to change there do you need to usher in fresh energy when it comes to your career and your workplace with Uranus there because when it comes to your public image Leo when it comes to your professional life you need a bit more freedom you need a little bit more um space to breathe to be yourself to show off your weird side to show off your goofy side to show off your different interests what makes you unique and if that's not working in the workplace, some of you might actually be thinking of changing jobs if you don't feel like you get to bring out that energy. Or you might be doing something solo uh, when it comes to your work, beginning a new chapter or solo project. We have the Six of Cups. So a lot of you have something or someone from the past returning under this uh, new moon, or it might be you uh, reaching out to someone from the past Leo but I really feel like there is someone or something a soulmate from your past someone that you used to be romantically involved with someone that you wanted to be romantically involved with someone where there's a deep soulmate style connection could be coming up for you at the time of this new moon especially because the new moon is conjunct Venus with a hanged man and the ten of swords you might see the hurt this person caused differently you might see the situation differently and this in a way could be kind of liberating for you Leo if you run into someone from the past or maybe reconnect with someone from the past perhaps you didn't connect with this person the first time for fear perhaps you didn't um keep a friendship going because you didn't feel good enough or something like that you're being asked to look at an old relationship from a different perspective Leo if one should pop up around this time and perhaps if it's nobody popping up your mind is just on someone from the past and you're really thinking could I have done this differently should they have done this differently and you're maybe doing a little bit of reconsideration and it's changing your perspective on a situation which perhaps once hurt you is what I'm seeing with this Leo that's what I have for you and I hope you have a beautiful new moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Virgo, welcome to the new moon. So Virgo, as I was saying to Leo, the sun has finally come out for the sign. So I don't know if you can see me or not really. I can barely see the camera, but I hope you can. Uh, Virgo, this is happening in your 12th house, which is what is hidden. Okay, so this new beginning might be very private for you. This might be something you're choosing to work on behind the scenes, something that is very internalized, something you're doing internally. You're perhaps looking inward, you're perhaps reflecting, examining your inner world and how you truly feel about things, what you think might be running the show unconsciously, subconsciously. And you might be more inclined around this new moon to spend a little bit of time alone. Now, with this Venus retrograde cycle, you might have been prone to isolating yourself, but this new moon would be a really great time, Virgo, to see a shaman or a hypnotherapist, or a therapist, or a healer of some kind. I had the most interesting thing happen to me under the full moon in Aquarius. The, I'm a Pisces rising, so obviously our um, axes are flipped. Under the full moon in Aquarius, just past there, I did get contacted by someone. I think it was, um, and it's someone I know, but it, he contacted me a few days before the full moon and said, hey, you know, I was wondering, do you want to do, because he's a shaman, he's like, do you, I don't think you can see me anymore, can you? It's like a halo. He asked me if I wanted to do a shamanic journey and it just happened that it was um, a couple of days after the full moon in my 12th house. And it was such a an amazing experience. I really got a lot out of it. I got a lot of what was going on unconsciously, a lot of places where I felt stuck. I had a soul retrieval. So 12th house new moons and full moons are the best time for anything spiritual, anything woo-woo kind of, I suppose if you call it woo-woo. It's quite derogatory, but I think if it's something that is a bit occult, a bit different in nature, very spiritual, really works with the energies that you can feel rather than what you can see and getting into your unconscious mind, a shamanic journey is the perfect way to do that. So perhaps for some of you, you're going to be going for a Reiki appointment, seeing a shaman, going to a breathwork session, um, 
seeing a therapist, anything that can get you into your subconscious or unconscious mind would be really beneficial for you around the time of this 12th house new moon. Just be careful of total isolation because you don't want to feel lonely and cut off from the world. Uh, although you may decide to do that a little bit so that you can look inward. You might need more sleep. Uh, you might realize that you want to begin a new spiritual practice. You want to start meditating. You want to start a new sleep schedule. You want to reconnect with your soul. And some of you might actually begin a new secret romance with this being conjunct of Venus in your 12th house, Virgo. I really don't think you can see me. This looks like I've gone in the dark. Um, but that makes sense for the new moon in your 12th house. It is pretty in the dark. So with the connection to Venus, some of you might indeed be starting a romance behind the scenes. Um, or you might be uh, dreaming of a soulmate or something around this time as well. So do pay attention to your dreams. They're going to be very important. They're really going to show you how you're feeling. And I feel you're going to be contemplating your relationship to faith. You might be changing your perspectives. You might be noticing how certain viewpoints of the world are really keeping you stuck. And under this new moon, you might realize, oh, these aren't mine. These come from here. These come from there. That sort of thing. So let's get you a card, Virgo. The King of Wands. A lot of you could be dealing with a fire sign, an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius under this new moon. Let's see why. King of Cups, okay, you could be dealing with a lot of people. <laughs> That's weird. And the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so I'm getting this now. When it comes to this new moon, Virgo, a lot of you are considering what it is would make you feel passionate, loved, and happy when it comes to your career, when it comes to your sense of abundance, when it comes to your legacy even. And uh, this is an interesting one. I do think that there could be a lot going on for you when it comes to your relationships to other people because we have a fire sign we have a water sign neither the you are so there could be some people around this time really present i think this is people presenting their services to you like people presenting what they do for work so this might be psychic people this might be entrepreneurial people people who do um people who do very uh They're perhaps self-employed. I could see this being people that work in the healing industries for a living, perhaps being people that you're connecting with under this. But I also could see with the North Node in Aries, perhaps if you're in a relationship with a water sign, like a Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, or you're in a relationship with a fire sign, Aries, or Sagittarius, it's a very serious relationship. I could see you maybe have something comes up surrounding money with these people. Is something that I could see but that's what I have for you Virgo I hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you soon bye hi Libra welcome to the new moon in Leo for your sign so Libra this new moon is interesting for you in particular because it is going to be conjunct your ruler Venus and Venus is now past the halfway point of the retrograde cycle so this new moon is ushering in a new beginning when it comes to your friendships when it comes to your teams that you're a part of groups of people that you're a part of your social networks, and also your hopes and aspirations for the future. So with this new moon, it feels as though Libra, perhaps there is a new beginning happening with a, a team that you're a part of. So perhaps you're a part of a team, a network, a group of people, and you're taking on, because this is in conjunction with your ruler, you're taking on a new role within this team. You're taking on a new approach to this team. You're taking, in, taking on a new... Uh, persona within this team based on the reflection that you've been doing about your teams and your social networks and the groups that you're a part of and how they're working how they're functioning and how they're doing and with this being a new moon conjunct venus it's particularly social so perhaps you're wanting to get more social get more mixy with the groups that you're a part of perhaps you're wanting to connect with them more perhaps you're wanting to organize events perhaps you're wanting to organize um more opportunities to deepen the connections and in your one-on-one -on -one friendships perhaps also this is a new beginning happening with a friend uh this could be the deepening of a relationship a friendship that you have as well you could be really bonding with somebody that you are friends with and perhaps the friendship is getting that a little bit deeper but this is also an interesting one because for some of you, there may have been some challenges when it came to a team, when it came to a group of people, when it came to friendships. Perhaps certain friends in your life were going through very difficult times. Perhaps the team that you were a part of was becoming very stagnant, very uh, unhappy with each other, or they weren't really 
maximizing their potential, so to speak. And you've had to reassess what you can do to support this team or to connect people or to support this friendship. And maybe some friendships have been lost. Maybe you've left certain teams and maybe you're returning to certain groups and returning to certain teams in your life. And this is going to be something that is perhaps requiring you to make a bit of an effort, Libra, with the conjunction to Venus. And if you do, you'll be very well received. Now, it is going to be squaring Uranus. So it feels as though if you're in a relationship or you're in any kind of team or any kind of network, you're really being asked to consider, Libra, what it is that you want for the future. Because truthfully, it's very important that we do inventory every so often on our hopes and our wishes for the future. And the reason for this is because say you did not know what you wanted from a relationship and you just coasted and found yourself in relationships, they're not building a solid foundation because if you do not know what you want, you could find yourself having to exit the relationship uh, later because you just had no idea that you wanted something until it was taken off the table. So it's good to have an idea of what it is that you want and need from your relationships, from your friendships, from your groups, your teams, your networks, in order for you to feel hopeful, to feel like you're something to aspire to, so to speak. And um, this new moon does look like an opportunity for you to become a part of a group, to become a part of a social network, or to take on a new role within a group or a team, or reconnect with friends that you've maybe not seen in a while, or you've not been, you've not been able to mix with for whatever reason. So let's get you a tarot card, Libra, and see what comes up for you. Oh, <laughs> two swords. It's a very Libra card, actually. It's because it's a bit of a deadlock where you're not entirely sure what you're thinking. You're not entirely sure what you want. And this new moon is very important for getting to grips with that to maybe set the intention of figuring that out if you don't know yet. Um, we also have the two of cups. So for a lot of you, there could be deadlocks in your relationships. You might be feeling a bit stuck. You might be feeling a bit stagnant on what you need to do to make a certain relationship work, what you want from a relationship, what you need from a relationship. King of Pentacles in order to feel secure, especially if this is with an earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or especially if this is to do with earth, um, earth work relationships or relationships where you are financially committed to another person or you benefit through other people's resources because the square to Uranus is happening in your eighth house of shared resources. So maybe there is something that needs to be decided when it comes to a shared resource, money that you make from other people, money you make from your partner. There is maybe a little bit of deadlock and a little bit of confusion surrounding maybe an inheritance, maybe a government payment, maybe um, shares or something like that. And you are having to, under this new moon, find some clarity on the matter or things may not be entirely clear just yet. That is what I have for you, Libra. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to the new moon in Leo for your sign. So Scorpio, this new moon is happening in your 10th house, which gives me the sense that this new beginning for you is going to be, it's going to be through the lens of your professional life, your career, your public life, your goals. And this might be that you're going to be attempting a new goal again. Uh, this might be something that you've tried to achieve before and it didn't work out the first time and now you're doing things differently. Maybe you're doing something differently with another person who's assisting you in making this goal happen and it's going to feel more achievable, but it might be something that you really wanted to do before and now you're going to give it another shot again because Venus has been in retrograde. Uh, the sun keeps coming out and making me disappear, <laughs> but you can just listen to my voice if you can't see me. Uh, so this can be a new chapter professionally. With the Venus retrograde, again, I do think that it is something that perhaps you've wanted before or thought about before or attempted before uh, or have been doing before. This might be that you're beginning a new role in an old job. This might be that you are going back to an old workplace. This might be that you're connecting with old professional networks, uh, people you used to work with in order to do a new job, a new role or meet a new goal. This could be a promotion for some people. This could be a step up in their role because I feel with the conjunction to Venus, this is going to be something that is probably, you know, really positive for you. It's maybe going to make you more money with Venus in the picture. It's maybe going to give you more status. It's going to make you look better. And I feel that this one could be quite collaborative with you in a sense because Venus does rule your seventh house. But I also think with the square to Uranus that there may be some unpredictability when it comes to partnerships, business partnerships, work partnerships, 
or maybe the way that you relate to another people, you might need a lot of space uh, if you're beginning a new chapter professionally. You might need a lot of freedom if you're beginning a new chapter professionally as well in order for you to not feel like you're climbing the walls, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, there is a new beginning happening for you in your career. This might be a new goal for you. And it might be a new goal or a new role or a new chapter for you professionally, Scorpio, that aligns with your authenticity, how you view yourself, how you want to be viewed, how you want to feel, what, in the way that you feel like you're being true to yourself. And I understand that these, you know, concepts get thrown around a lot now. It's like, speak your truth, your authentic self. But it isn't meant to be it isn't meant to be a patronizing thing. It's when you're doing something where you know it's in alignment with who you are because you don't feel icky about yourself. You don't feel bad about yourself doing it. You feel proud of yourself. You feel pleased with yourself. You feel like you're growing. You feel like you're achieving something that's good for you and your soul. You don't just feel like you're trundling along and you're playing a role or masking in a way that makes you feel yucky, you know? You're kind of doing something professionally, I think, Scorpio, that makes you feel very true to yourself. So this could bring bring about a new beginning for you professionally based on the reflection you've been doing when it comes to your public image, image when it comes to your persona and uh, the way that you want to show up to the world. So I like this one for you. Just know that in relationships in general, especially if they're coming through the context of business and career, you need a bit of space. Um, people that you're working with might be a bit unpredictable your partner might be a bit unpredictable if you're in a relationship uh they might be a bit moody or erratic with the square to uranus or an old issue might come up in a relationship three of cups there's reason to celebrate under this new moon scorpio there's reason to connect with other people and celebrate i feel like a water sign a cancer scorpio pisces that you may be friends with um could be a key part to this new moon in Leo for you reconnecting. The Three of Cups is a reunion card. So reconnecting to an old friend, someone you used to work with, an old business partner, an old, um, maybe an old partner in general with the Venus retrograde ruling your seventh house, obviously. Uh, you could reconnect with someone from the past, but I do see a reunion, most likely linked to a water sign, a Cancer Scorpio Pisces, uh, happening under this new moon for you, Scorpio. But it might also be having something to celebrate with friends as well because you are the Queen of Cups. But that's what I have for you. I hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Sagittarius. Welcome to the Venus Retrograde for your sign. So Sagittarius, I'm having a bit of trouble with the lighting. The sun keeps coming out, which I'm very grateful for, but it is sort of messing up whether you can see me on the camera or not. But again, grateful because uh, we've had nothing but rain and then it'll rain for an hour or two and then it'll suddenly be blowing sunshine for an hour and then it'll rain again. It's very unpredictable very confusing but it's Ireland anyway this new moon you probably can't see me but I'm just going to talk and you can listen to me this new moon is happening in your ninth house and this this brings in a new beginning when it comes to traveling when it comes to your education when it comes to your faith your viewpoint your religious perspectives your religious beliefs and so with Venus retrograde in this sector you've really been revisiting these themes and I kind of think for some of you, you might actually be beginning a chapter of study again that you perhaps did before and you walked away from. Maybe you decided you wanted to do a degree and then something happened and you had to step away from it. Say you were doing a degree and then you had you felt pregnant and you had to leave it for a while. Maybe you're thinking of picking that degree up again and this new moon is your new chapter. Perhaps for some of you, you were studying Buddhism and you stepped away from it for whatever reason. You got distracted, it wasn't the right time and now you're studying it again. You could be easily beginning a new chapter when it comes to faith, when it comes to higher education that perhaps you've attempted before and you didn't get to do. Or perhaps you're, you're making a new beginning in these areas because of the reflection you've done and you're figuring out what's truly authentic to you. Uh, with this being conjunct Venus, this could be a turning point or a moment of clarity or a new beginning when it comes to a long distance relationship or a relationship where you're both from different parts of the world, different cultures. It could be a new beginning in terms of having a relationship with someone from a different country. It could be having a relationship with a teacher or something like that. Um, and I mean that if you're, you know, an adult, obviously, I shouldn't have to say that, but we live in a very strange world where these things you need do actually need to be clarified because there are people out there that take advantage. But I mean like a consensual relationship with someone who is your mentor or a teacher or something when you're an, a fully fledged adult. Um, 
in higher education or you're attending a workshop for example just so we're clear uh, this could put this could be um, a time when you're really reevaluating and reconsidering a new perspective when it comes to faith and when it comes to your religious perspective Sagittarius so it feels like you might be deciding to sign up to learn something but if you are I think you've maybe played with this idea before or if you're beginning a relationship I feel like there's maybe a bit of a distance with this person or perhaps they're very learned very knowledgeable they could be an actual teacher uh, or something like that for you Sagittarius but with the square to Uranus in your sixth house I also kind of think that perhaps you are really wanting to shake up your routine shake up your day-to-day -day life or you're having to shake up your routine and your day-to-day -day life in order to facilitate this new beginning when it comes to your study or your higher education or to travel because the six of swords just popped out so for a lot of you you could actually be taking a trip at this time and if you are taking a trip, do re do realize that with the square to Uranus, you might it might have a little bit of a knock on effect on your health. And I don't mean that to scare you, but I just mean that say you travel, you know, make sure to wash your hands often because you might pick up a bug in the airport. That's got to be one of the most common places to get sick. Uh, say that you're traveling, make sure that you're eating plenty of fruit and vegetables where you go. Um, you know, taking care of your body, taking care of your physical well being when you travel because. With Uranus and the sixth, your health can be kind of unpredictable. And with the six of swords and the hierophant, I really feel like a lot of you are moving towards a new belief system or a new perspective on the world and perhaps a more adventurous one, which is funny because you yourself are an incredibly adventurous sign and the square to Uranus is asking you to lean into your authenticity. So maybe Sagittarius, you were traveling all the time and then you stopped and you didn't make it a priority and your mental health has suffered and now you're realizing I actually need to make this a priority in my life I need to get away at least once a year or I'll go mad <laughs> so you're deciding to commit to that Sagittarius but that's what I have for you hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you soon bye hi Capricorn Sun Moon Rising welcome to the new moon in Leo Capricorn I've said to the other ones I'm having lighting issues the sun has come out so grateful for that but uh it's sort of messed up the lighting and I'm not sure if you can see me or if the the um I just can't see the viewfinder, but I think you might not be able to see me. So if you can't, just listen to this as if it was an audio recording, basically. Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but I can't control the sun and I don't want it to go away. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain. But this new moon is happening for you, Capricorn, in your eighth house. So this is looking like a new beginning for you, perhaps. Perhaps in terms of a shared resource. So say you are in a relationship and your partner has suddenly got a huge pay rise and you're now benefiting them from them more financially. Perhaps for some of you, you're finally getting a loan for a mortgage. Perhaps for some of you, you're finally being granted a mortgage. Perhaps for some of you, you're coming into an inheritance. Uh, it can be financial. And I think with the link to Venus, this could absolutely be financial. And perhaps this is going to be a time where you're finances are increasing as a result Capricorn of somebody else in your life perhaps you're getting a tax rebate as well under this new moon that's a potential because uh, Venus retrograde in the eighth can be money coming back to you that you were owed and that can be you know taxes that can be um, spousal support inheritance or whatever that has perhaps just not made its way to you for the first for whatever reason for the first time now this can also be a new beginning based on depth and intensity and the eighth house is an incredibly occult place. This might be a new beginning for you with an astrologer. This might be a new beginning for you with a tarot reader, with an occultist, with someone who works with the taboo. Uh, so perhaps for some of you, you're going to be uh, engaging with the practices of an astrologer. Perhaps for some of you, you're leaning into conspiracy. You're learning in, you're leaning into the occult and you're more interested in these topics going forward. And these can all be things or people that you have had connection with before because of Venus retrograde. So you might be reconnecting with an astrologer, with a therapist that you used to see, something like that under this new moon Capricorn or reconnecting deeper with eighth house interests like conspiracy, uh, occult stories, the supernatural, <laughs> these type of things might be more of interest to you under this new moon as well Capricorn but this can also be a new chapter in a relationship you could be deciding to deepen a relationship you could be deciding that you want to dig a little bit deeper with a partner I also feel that a lot of you could perhaps be deciding that you want to dig a little bit of a little bit deeper on a particular issue in your life psychologically speaking so perhaps you're deciding you want to give therapy another try Capricorn 
or you're wanting to give astrology another try or something like that. Uh, there is going to be a square to Uranus in your fifth house. So I kind of think that when it comes to matters of the heart, especially because Venus rules your fifth house, you might be deciding whether or not a romantic prospect is the one for you or not. Does it go deeply enough? Does it make enough sense for you? Do you feel secure with this person? Do you feel loved with this person? Do you feel at ease? Do you feel like this person is pleasant? Do you feel like they make you look good is another one as well. Uh... And it is entirely possible then that you're reconnecting as well if you're single with someone that you used to date or something like that under this new moon Capricorn and deciding if you want to give it another go or not. Let's get you a tarot card and see what comes up. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Seven of Swords. I don't mean to laugh. I just, and I know that we're all impartial and stuff when we read tarot and astrology, but this card just, I don't like it. Uh, the Seven of Swords. Now, this does not have to mean that you have a hidden enemy and that someone's trying to sabotage you and someone's lying to you and someone's being mischievous and stuff like that, but it can. And that person can be you. <laughs> so the square to Uranus is saying, is this authentic? Are you being authentic to yourself when it comes to your relationships, to your love life, to your connections, to um, intimacy? I feel like underneath we have the Ace of Swords. You're getting truth in a matter on whether or not you've been missing something too. This Seven of Swords can absolutely be a person that's not acting in your best interest, but it can also just as easily be a psychological response that's not acting in your best interest. Somewhere where you're self-sabotaging, somewhere where you're stealing your own swords, uh, that kind of energy that you want to dig a little bit deeper into so that you can stop doing that so you can stop being the seven of swords in your own life or you can stop attracting the seven of swords energy into your life capricorn you could be committing to getting some real insights here and maybe getting out of your own way a little bit but that's what i have for you hope you have a good one and i'll talk to you soon bye hi aquarius welcome to the new moon in your seventh house aquarius so this is a new chapter for you in terms of your relationships. Now, with Venus having retrograded in your seventh house and still being in retrograde until September, you've been doing a lot of reflecting on your relationships. Perhaps if you're in a relationship with someone, you've been reflecting on what's working, what's not working. Uh, there may have been some challenges, there may have been some disagreements with a key relationship in your life. And you're figuring out what it is that you need in order to feel loved, in order to feel safe in a relationship I think for you Aquarius what you need to feel content within them and this new moon is an interesting one because the sun which is always conjunct the new moon they're always conjunct is going to be squared by Uranus as well and the sun rules your seventh house of relationships I feel like if you're in a relationship that's not working this might be the time where you really do say actually I want something different I want something that works for me and that might be through the lens of what works for you in terms of your living arrangement, in terms of your family, in terms of your uh, emotional security. So if you're in a relationship that's not working, I do think this might be the time when you decide that you want a new chapter in your life or you're sort of saying, you're, or you're maybe discovering what you need to do within the relationship and change within the relationship to make it work for you. Uh, but this can also equally be a new chapter for some of you in your relationship. So or in your relationship life. So this can be meeting somebody new. Now, it is gonna be conjunct Venus and Venus is retrograde. So it might not be someone brand spanking new. It might be someone that you've dated before, someone from the past that you're seeing differently. It might be that you're perhaps even connecting with a past life soulmate, like a past life spouse. And if you're curious about that and you wanna see that, if you can see it in your synastry, if you do meet somebody new, the south node will probably, one person's south node will probably be touching the other person's Venus or descendant. That's a clue if you're looking into that. But a lot of the time people meet new folk during Venus retrograde or Mercury retrograde and they think, but how did I meet a new person? It's usually a past life connection where they feel very familiar. So some of you could be beginning a new relationship with someone from the past. Take it slow because Venus retrogrades are not the optimum time to meet somebody new, especially in your seventh house, but they can be great for reconnecting with somebody and in some cases that is someone from the past life but just take it so to make sure that it will work for you because it is not doomed if you meet someone during venus retrograde it's just that you might not see them clearly so if you meet someone you might not like them at the start and then 
one Venus goes direct, you think that person could be the love of my life. Or it could be the other way around, you think this person could be the love of my life. And then <laughs> it goes direct and you think, oh, what was I thinking? Anyway, uh, this is kind of giving that energy. It is a new beginning in your relationship life based on what works best for you with the conjunction to Venus in your seventh house. What makes you feel good in a relationship? What makes you feel love and safe and secure? There's a lot of... Uh, tension and unpredictability when it comes to home and family matters though uh, Aquarius so maybe the maybe things at home are a bit shaky or things with family are a bit shaky under this new moon and you're perhaps deciding that in order to feel better you need to spend more time with your partner or your best friend or uh, you need a little bit more connection with others and you need support and help from others in order to navigate these challenges we have the nine of cups which is the wish card so something oh and the hierophant Hmm. do keep the faith Aquarius because something is manifesting for you there is a whispering there's a whispering there's something about to come true that you really want provided you keep the faith provided you believe in its potential there seems to be a wish coming true I also feel like a lot of you might be becoming or connecting a little bit deeper to your spiritual side now that the south node is in Libra, I think a lot of you could be letting go of outdated belief systems and letting go of perhaps <clears throat> a detrimental relationship to faith or your belief systems. Maybe letting go of old belief systems that are not yours to keep or perhaps old relationship patterns with your belief systems whereby maybe you thought having belief was naive or maybe you thought believing in a higher power was silly whatever it is I think your belief systems might be changing in a way that feels really good to you Aquarius I do think there's some sort of wish coming true for you but it seems to be kind of spiritual so pay attention to what comes up for you in terms of your relationship to faith and spirituality under this new moon hi Pisces welcome to the new moon in Leo for your sign so Pisces, uh, this is happening in the sixth house for you. Now Venus has been retrograde in the sixth house since July and and so you've been reflecting on your relationship to your body, your physical wellness, what you're eating, the exercises that you're doing and you might have perhaps picked up an old exercise that you used to do. For example, I'm a Pisces rising, I have taken up boxing again and this is something that I used to do and I used to love but just changes happened and I didn't do it anymore. And so you two may have reconnected to a particular sport that you used to do and exercise. Perhaps you decided to go back to the gym. Perhaps you decided to eat an old diet. So maybe you used to be vegan. You've gone back to being vegan or maybe you used to be uh, whatever it is. You know, you've reconnected with an old habit that you used to do that worked for you. Or perhaps you've been rethinking and just listening to your body more and you've been noticing, oh my goodness, I'm actually kind of susceptible to reacting badly when I eat this kind of food or when I drink that kind of drink and you're really reconnecting with your body you can't ignore it and the squares to Uranus have probably been giving you a few health hiccups here and there some unexpected tummy upsets or unexpected headaches or something like that and you've become aware of maybe whether where there's like a dietary uh, component to this so you're beginning again he sees you're having a new beginning whereby maybe you're starting a new diet a new exercise regimen a new routine you're incorporating something new into your schedule that's going to stop you feeling so boxed in because the square to uranus is saying this needs to be authentic to you you need to feel good about this you need to feel like you're being true to yourself and so maybe for some of you that is going vegetarian maybe for some of you that is fasting maybe for some of you that is drinking more water exercising even if it's a gentle one every day of the week or something like that, walking every day, meditating every day, whatever is good for your wellness. I will say, I think that the connection to Venus is saying that this is probably going to be from the lens of wanting to look good, you know, wanting to look beautiful. So maybe you're wanting to drink more water to have better skin. You're wanting to fast so that you um, look better in your jeans, whatever this is. And there's no shame in that because if you want to look good, that is your prerogative and uh, whatever that means to you provided you're not hurting yourself or harming yourself Pisces um, this is a new opportunity for you to you know really do what's right for you through the lens of health and through the lens of wellness because that is personal to you so to speak so you might be beginning something new when it comes to your health 
a new routine, a new diet, a new regimen, that kind of thing. Uh, and also this is asking you to begin something new when it comes to your work. So for some of you, this could be a promotion. For some of you, this could be a new role. For some of you, this could be a new job. And if it is, it seems to be linked in some way to the past. So this might be a role that you've been doing for a while. You're getting a promotion that is long overdue. This might be that you're starting a new job in an old firm, or it could be that you're beginning a new um, cycle of work that you had attempted before or that was postponed or something like this. But it does seem to be a new chapter in your work life as well, Pisces. So it could be a new job, it could be a new role. Um, because it's conjunct Venus, it could pay you better, it could make you feel better about yourself, more confident or something like that. With the square to Uranus in your third house, there does seem to be a bit of unpredictability going on still when it comes to communication, when it comes to just mental activity, your anxiety levels might be quite high, for example. And that's maybe pushing you to take better care of yourself because you're noticing that your body reacts whether you're aware of your emotions or not. So if you're trying to suppress anxiety, it's coming through in stomach upsets or something like that. And you're realizing the connection between your mental health and the way that you think and uh, the information you're taking on in your physical well-being. So perhaps you're going to cut screen time on your phone. Perhaps you're going to stop communicating um, Stop communicating so much with people that don't hear you, if that's affecting your health. Pisces, let's have a little look and get you a card. Nine of Cups, this came up for Aquarius too. Why do I feel like there's a lot of Pisces, Sun, Moon, Risings watching this that already have Aquarius placements? The star is the Aquarius card. <laughs> nice. I feel like if you're a Pisces watching this, you might have you might have Pisces in your big three, you might have Aquarius in your big three too, or a significant Aquarius placement. Do let me know because this seems to be for you specifically. I'm a Pisces rising Aquarius moon. But Nine of Cups and the Star, I feel like a wish is coming true for a lot of you Pisces, which is really cute. I'm trying to think uh, what the astrological correspondence might be for this, why you would have a wish coming true. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like something is manifesting for you under this new moon. Pisces, it's very exciting. It's like a wish is coming true, something you really want, something that you've been manifesting. This might be a good new moon to manifest something for yourself. But the Star is a card of healing, so perhaps you're manifesting healing from something physically, healing from something emotional you're wanting to heal from something that has held you down or held you back for quite a long time it might have been with this five of pentacles a rejection of sorts pisces um yeah a rejection or a betrayal of sorts maybe healing from this is going to be your manifestation or your wish come true that's what i have for you pisces and i will talk to you soon Hey Aries, welcome to the new moon in Leo for your sign. So Aries, this is a fun one for you. This is happening in your fifth house, which is to do with creativity, it's to do with passion, happiness, joy, love, romance, and that kind of thing. So for some of you, this might be that you are perhaps beginning a new chapter in your romantic life. And if you are, it feels as though it's linked in some way, shape or form to the past. So say you're single, this could be reconnecting with someone you used to date. Say you're in a relationship, this could be reconnecting with date night. Uh, doing a hobby you used to do together and something to just reignite the romance, I think, for a lot of you with this fifth house new moon. This can be really a nice time to reconnect with your heart and do something again that you're passionate about, an old hobby of yours, an old creative endeavor of yours that perhaps makes you feel really soulful, really connected to your heart and really happy and passionate and joyful. So it connects you to the joy that you experience as a child, you know, your inner child perhaps, and this might be a new chapter where you're working on your inner child. So you're doing actual inner child shadow work. You're perhaps picking up an old hobby from childhood even that you used to do that makes you feel really happy. I like that this one is trining Chiron in your first house because this is going to make you feel more accepting of yourself and more accepting of your flaws and your wounding areas as well. Uh, there's a square to Uranus, so I want to say the fifth house is to do with gambling. Just be careful because if you do gamble under this new moon, it might not necessarily... I mean, in some ways it could go kind of well with its conjunction to Venus, but Venus is retrograde and the square to Uranus is saying that it might be kind of unpredictable with your finances, Aries. So be cautious of that. There's a lot of financial unpredictability with the sun uh, ruling your fifth house, squaring Uranus in your second. So I feel like a gamble just might not be... A good idea around this time if you're thinking of taking a risk or doing something risky with your money just be careful this isn't necessarily the new moon to hit the slot machines you know 
But I do feel like if you take a risk creatively, it might it might inspire you. It might light a fire under you again. You might feel more lit up and enthusiastic. Uh, this is definitely a new beginning based on the heart for you where you're going to be doing something from a place of love. And uh, with the square to Uranus, I feel like you're doing it differently. So if it is creative or if it is an old hobby, it might be, it might work out differently this time because your values have changed and your perspective on what matters has changed as well, Aries. Um, Ten of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands came out. So I really do feel like there could be some news coming in for you when it comes to your finances. There could be some news coming into you when it comes to your money. I'm also thinking with this new moon being in the fifth house square Uranus, for some of you, this could be a really unexpected pregnancy. I will say that too. So if that is not something that you're open to in life or at this time, just be extra careful with that because it can be news of a pregnancy, either in your life or someone around you. Um, with the square to Uranus, when Uranus squares the moon, unpredictable pregnancies can absolutely be a thing. And because the sun rules your fifth house, just be extra cautious if that's not something you want. If that is something you want, you might be pleasantly surprised around this new moon. Um, Aries. But I also think some of you, for some reason, with that ten of pentacles, eight of wands, could be taking a family trip or travelling to see family. Or you could have family travelling to see you. For whatever reason, Aries, uh, that's kind of cute. But I also think there could be some sort of manifesting going on when it comes to the legacy that you want to leave behind. Perhaps for some of you that is creative. Perhaps you want to leave behind a creative legacy or perhaps you are deciding that you want to have a big family or you're deciding that you want to have um, some sort of... No, I think that's it. I think I'm going to leave it with that. That's what I have for you, Aries. I'll talk to you soon. Hi Taurus, welcome to the new moon in Leo. So Taurus, this is happening in your fourth house. Now Venus is still retrograde in your fourth house and it is conjunct this new moon. So some of you might be going back to somewhere you used to live. There might be a new chapter when it comes to your living situation that is in some way, shape or form linked to the past. So that could be moving back to your hometown. That could be moving back to your old neighborhood, your old apartment, your old house. You could be picking up renovations that you were doing before that maybe slowed down for whatever reason and now you're going to begin a new chapter doing them up and maybe doing them a bit differently, doing them up in a way that makes sense with your style because I feel Taurus like your style has changed quite a bit with Uranus being in your sign. So with the square to Uranus, I feel like you really want to shake things up and change things up. Uh, just slow your roll a little bit if you are going to suddenly decide that you want to paint your whole house yellow or something like that because the square to Uranus is kind of unpredictable it's kind of shaky and Venus is still retrograde so aesthetically if you're deciding to make some grand sweeping changes to your home just be mindful you might change your mind um it it, it really could be that you decide you just feel like oh my style has changed so much I want to completely revamp this bedroom and make it all velvet pink I want it to match the Barbie movie and then in a month you're thinking I'm so sick of pink it's that kind of energy where you might really want to do something unpredictably unpredictable when it comes to your home when it comes to your your living aesthetic uh, or it might be that you decide that you really want to move home and then you get home and you're thinking okay well if I'm moving home I need more freedom from all the people that I know that are around here. I need to let them know that I'm not the same person I used to be. I need a bit more space, I need a bit more freedom. I need to do things a little bit differently and people might be kind of surprised by that, Taurus. Um, if there is a change in your living situation or you are in some way, shape or form going back to the past, and I just think that you're going to be surprising people quite a bit with the changes that you're making or perhaps you're surprising your family quite a bit with how much you've changed. If you're visiting family at this time, they might think, whoa, Taurus has really changed, really shifted, is really different uh, and is maybe running with an entirely different crowd as well. So you're probably surprising your family. You're probably surprising the people that you live with. You could be uh, the source of shock at this time, Taurus, with Uranus being in your sign and Venus being your ruler conjunct this new moon. I feel like when it comes to your living situation, your home situation, you're really, you've been rethinking what does home mean to me? What makes me feel at home? What makes me feel safe? And that could be completely different to what you expected it to be a few months ago, Taurus. You could feel like, actually, I want to live in a camper van. Actually, I want to live... By the coast uh, you just want something very different 
and you're really considering what would be best for you in the next chapter. As I say, this may change. Venus is retrograde. You might not be 100% sure. So make sure any permanent fixtures aren't so permanent when it comes to your living situation. Taurus. Let's see what we've got. Seven, oh, eight of pentacles and, oh, got a few things. We have the seven of, the eight of pentacles, the four of cups and the page of wands. I feel like some of you have been rejecting something creative that you've been working on or wanting to work on for a while. And this new moon is saying to you, it's time to get creative. Just work on it in the comfort of your own home. If there's a project that you want to do, you don't have to tell everybody, but don't reject your inner child. With this fourth house new moon, don't reject your inner child because there's something that your soul is really longing to do to work on and you've been rejecting it for a while and it's saying pick it up again. So I don't know what that is for you Taurus. It could be actually working with a hammer. So this could be doing renovations, but it's saying to pick it up again. And that's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Gemini, welcome to the new moon in Leo. So Gemini, this new moon is happening in your third house. So there could be some kind of new beginning when it comes to your learning. I think a lot of you could be picking up a book that you used to read or you tried to read before that maybe focuses on mindset, that maybe focuses on information that you need at this particular time. And you might have tried to read it before or it might be a course you tried to take before or a workshop you tried to take before and now is the time because the new moon is conjunct Venus retrograde. This might be something that you wanted to do before, you tried, you didn't finish. Uh, it's, it's giving the sense of like beginning again. It's something that you really wanted to learn, something you really wanted to perhaps even teach Gemini. Maybe you're taking a workshop, maybe you're taking a seminar, maybe you are going to be giving a TED talk, doing a tutorial. And you were getting there before, but it didn't take off. And now it's the time to do it and do it differently. And with the square to Uranus in your 12th house, perhaps you are finding that you're realizing there were a few unconscious limitations or beliefs that you needed to break free from in order to do this thing, learn this thing, teach this thing, present this thing. And it could be that perhaps you have been needing to become aware of some stuff that has been challenging you and this stuff can still challenge you even when you're aware of it it can still challenge you so if you're wanting to teach you might have to embrace the fact that you're anxious about it you're scared about it you're a bit fearful about it and that that's okay uh you might have to be aware of the fact that not everybody's gonna get it not everyone's gonna support it that's also okay you might have some fears come up and sometimes that just is what it is you just have to face the fear and do it anyway um, bonus points if that is the book that you're picking up again <laughs> Gemini under this new moon you might actually be rereading a book that inspired you once and it's going to inspire you again this can also be a new chapter when it comes to your siblings when it comes to neighbors it can be a new chapter when it comes to cousins aunts and uncles and perhaps this is a new beginning in your relationship to them especially if they've been acting a little bit out of character let's get your card Gemini the magician oh your energy just remember, Gemini, that what you speak is creating your future all the time. So if you have any statements that begin with I am, just be mindful you're creating the future. You're setting up a precedent for your future self. So be careful of what you're speaking into existence. If you're going to manifest under this new moon, Gemini, do it through verbalizing what you want. Do it through writing what you want. You have all the tools to create something. So I feel like if you're wanting to teach a course, start a... a reopen your YouTube channel, reopen your Instagram page or something like that and give it another shot. Now's the time. You have all the tools necessary. That is what I have for you, Gemini, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Cancer. Welcome to the new moon in Leo. So Cancer, this new moon is happening in your second house of money. So I think for a lot of you, this is beginning a new financial chapter. Perhaps you've been reevaluating your finances, your spending habits, the money in versus money out. You've been maybe getting all your ducks in a row when it comes to your money and really reassessing what needs to change, what needs to be adapted, what needs to be reconsidered, refigured out, all that sort of stuff. And um, this is a new chapter in your money. For some of you, this is maybe actually coming into new money, a new source of income is happening for you around this time. With it being conjunct Venus retrograde, this might be something that you um, made money on before that you're redoing, you're bringing it up again. Or this might be that perhaps you are going to be making money in a new way, but based on what you've learned and what you've reconsidered and reassessed under the last uh, month or so. 
Cancer. You've also been rethinking your values and what matters to you and what makes you feel confident. And this is a new opportunity for you to embrace that confidence, to figure out what it is that you need to do in order to feel your best, in order to believe in yourself. And with the conjunction to Venus, this might be that you need to dress a certain way to feel better. This might be that you need to speak a certain way to command authority. This might be that you are maybe investing a bit more in your appearance and your aesthetic in refining yourself so that you do feel more confident and you do feel more more um, self-love. It's kind of giving that sense of dressing for the job you want, not the job that you have energy, perhaps, Cancer. The square to Uranus means that friends might be kind of unpredictable. Your social networks and your teams might be kind of unpredictable at this time and you really want to be rolling with a crowd that give you freedom to be yourself. They maybe see things a little bit differently, that maybe are a little bit different, Cancer. Yeah, Ten of Swords, because I feel like a lot of you might have suffered something recently that really hurt you. Let me see what that is. The King of Swords. Do you know what? I actually think for a lot of you, you're you're working on rebuilding your confidence from an experience where someone really took it away from you. So with the Ten of Swords and the King of Swords, that could be an air sign, it could be an Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, blah, 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 blah. But it could be someone who was very cold, someone who was narcissistic, someone who was sociopathic, uh, lacked empathy, lacked remorse, someone who hurt you very badly. And perhaps Venus Retrograde for you, Cancer, has been dealing with that person. Um, not even necessarily in your day-to-day -day life, but rethinking what that did to you, how it shaped you, how it shaped your personality, your confidence, your self-worth, and you've been really doing some work on that, Cancer, and this new moon is a new opportunity to begin again with better confidence, better self-worth based on the work that you've been doing, <laughs> temperance and the devil, healing from someone who really had a power over you when they were with you, when they were near you, uh, and has been holding power over you whether they were in your life or not. I really think a lot of you are healing from someone who took your power and your confidence away, whether that was last week, last year, 10 years ago. And I think when you start doing the work, or if you have been doing the work on healing from this, you're going to start to notice your finances increasing. You're going to start to notice your confidence and your opportunities increasing because you're setting your standards higher. But that is what I have for you, Cancer, and I will talk to you soon.